On behalf of the Companions of the Cross, I'd like to welcome you to the Permission Series. I am Kathy Bergagno, and I have been a lay associate of the Companions of the Cross for more than 25 years. So it is my joy and my honor to be your MC. I'm coming to you from St. Mary's Church here in Ottawa, Canada. Father Bob Bedard, the founder of the Companions of the Cross, was the pastor here for many, many years. Father Bob had a simple plan. Give God permission, watch and wait on the Holy Spirit, support the works and the movement of the Holy Spirit. You know, in all my years as a lay associate, I had read many books on Father Bob's vision. I had also attended many of his conferences and retreats where he spoke in person about his vision. Wow, that was a, that was a blessing. And I saw it in action right here at St. Mary's. Many of Father Bob's parishioners at that time were on fire for the Lord. They gave God permission and the Holy Spirit went to work. They were explosively alive. Seeing all this, I started to examine my own prayer life and my own spiritual life. My, one of my favorite passages is put out into the deep, Luke 5, 4. Well, I put out into the deep and I received the courage and the strength to give God permission. From that point on, my prayer life was richer, my commitment to the Lord was stronger, my desire to serve was that much greater, and I wanted to grow more in my faith. So it is my prayer that this permission series may do the same for you. In the upcoming four sessions, we are going to hear from speakers talk on Father Bob's vision, followed by a prayer time with a seminarian and a closeout message from the Companions of the Cross. So will you journey with me now, together as we go down that road to becoming explosively alive Christians? It's my pleasure to welcome you to the first session in the Permission Series. The first step in Father Bob's plan is to give God permission or, as Father Bob used to say, wave the white flag of surrender. Our speaker will be Father Alan McDonald. Father Alan, you may, some of you may know, has a homily series called Sipping on the Sabbath. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Now, let's hear Father Alan speak to us about giving God permission. I get the impression that the Lord is tired being a spectator in people's lives and wants to be a participant. He wants in on the action. He wants to lead the thing, in fact. Jesus wants to be Lord and all that that implies. Lord is master. The master is the one who calls the shots. He's the one that says the way it's supposed to be. If I want to know what I'm supposed to do, I need to simply submit it to him. The Lord has a will for me and if I want to seek it, he's not going to hide it from me. God wants in. The well-known expression of Father Bob Bedard, give God permission, originated from a prayer that he was inspired to make and inspired to ask others to make every day. God communicated to him that if he, God, received permission from Father Bob and enough permissions from the people of St. Mary's Parish here in Ottawa, that he would begin to move. And that prayer certainly has borne fruit over the years in your life and in mine. And I'm just wondering, which is something I find myself doing as I'm getting a bit older, I'm just wondering how can I most effectively give God permission if I don't first of all know that I am so incredibly loved by him. How can I give God permission unless I am first of all receptive to his love? So I want to talk to you about six elements of this receptivity to the love of God. And the genesis of this reflection comes from a talk I heard a few years back by Monsignor Thomas Richter, who was a priest of the Diocese of Bismarck in North Dakota. 
and you're thinking to yourself, no, wait a minute, Father Allen's homilies always have three points. You're going to give us six points. I'm going to give you a six points. So this is like a double boost, <laughs> double the pleasure, double the fun. Six, six points to the receptivity of the love of God, which when we live makes us that much more effective, that much more available to the Lord, wanting to give him permission in our life to move and act as he wills. Regardless of how many points there are in my homily, I always have to have coffee with me. So here we go. I better take a big drink of coffee because I got six points to make. Okay, the first element of this receptivity to the Father's love is my poverty. Receiving our Father's love, my Father's love, your Father's love into our life happens in our place of poverty, not a place of strength. And so examining our life, where am I poor? Where am I needy? Where am I fragile? Where am I in need of help? And it's in these places where the Holy Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are pouring out love, while the evil spirit is pouring out lies into our life. And one of the signs that I'm not accepting my poverty is that I'm trying to control people, places, things, even God in my life. When I turn to my father, who is head over heels in love with me, and I'm receptive to that love, I am that much more effectively giving him permission to move, but I'm also coming to him in my powerlessness, giving him permission to minister to me in that place of need. And when I experience his healing and his transformation power and change, I am then convicted that when I give God permission, he takes me at his, at his word and he, he moves in a powerful way. The second element of this receptivity to the Father's love is that rejection is required. Here, I reject the lies of the evil spirit who has been speaking to me in my mind or yelling at me in my mind. Now this is not for the faint of heart because it requires cooperation, it requires work, but the grace is available to us. Can I identify in my life with the whisperings, the talking of others? I recently watched a show, a series on TV, and the two, two actors in this episode were talking to each other, and one actor said to the other, do you charge rent to all those people in your mind? <laughs> because if you were to charge rent to all the people who are talking in your mind, you'd make a fortune. Can I identify with that? What do I need to do instead? I need to kick these people out because they're not paying any rent. Whispering lies to me. What are some of these lies that I have spoken to me? What are some of these lies that I have come to believe? What are some of these lies that I need to reject so that I am that much more, again, receptive to my Father's love for me and that much more effective in the permission that I desire to give to God? Well, the lie that I am alone. The lie that no one's going to come and help me. The lie that I am an embarrassment. The lie that I am a mistake. That is to live in shame. The lie that I am not good enough. The lie that I don't have what it takes. I'm never going to amount to anything in life. The lie that I'm only tolerated by my father. He doesn't really love me. And those lies are spoken into me and they take root and they can manifest themselves in rejection, in a sense of abandonment, in a sense of, of shame. So I want to reject all that. Call each of them by name and say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce 
the lie of rejection. I renounce the lie of shame. I renounce the lie of abandonment. I renounce the lie that I'm not good enough. I renounce the lie that nobody cares. I renounce all that in the name of Jesus, asking him to fill me up with the gift of his truth so that, again, I am receptive, I'm open to receive his love, and that then propels me forward to want to give him permission to move and act in my life and in the circumstances that I find myself in every single day. The third element of this receptivity is that I need God's love all the time. I am, as it were, like a sailboat. I want to be open. If the sail on a, on a sailboat is closed in, that is, if I'm pusillanimous, small-hearted, I'm not effective. I want to be magnanimous. I want to have a disposition of openness to the Lord and allowing the full effect of the Holy Spirit to swell the sail of my life and to guide me and direct me to where he wants to go. Unfortunately, many of us fall into the temptation to believe or the desire to want to be instead a motorboat. You know, a big motorboat, strong, powerful, loud, that comes into port periodically to get fuel and then just charges out of port again and spends the whole day just roaming around on the ocean, roaming around on the open water, maybe terrorizing. <laughs> You know, or scaring other people, whatever. But then I run out of fuel and I come back. I don't want to be that way. I want to be someone who is constantly in contact with the Lord, constantly plugged into Him, constantly relying upon Him. I need His grace. I need His love all the time. Am I actively seeking the Lord? in everything that I do? Am I giving the Lord permission in every part of my life? Or are there some parts of my life where I find myself saying, Lord, this is mine. You can have all this, but this little thing, this little behavior, this little piece of, the, of my life, no way, this is mine. We can't give the Lord conditional permission. Well, I suppose we can. We can do what we want. We have free will. But I don't desire to give the Lord partial permission. I want to give the Lord complete permission. I don't want to be a sail that's kind of a little bit open. I want to be completely open and enjoy the ride, to go in the direction where the Lord himself is leading me, understanding that even though it is difficult, it is ultimately is the best for me because it comes from his plan and his design for my life. The fourth element of this receptivity to the love of God, which then propels us forward and engages us in this giving of God permission in our life, is that we do so in the present moment. The present moment, now, Giving God permission happens right now. God is here. God is here right now. We call this the, the sacrament of the present moment. Unfortunately, again, in our culture, and we're all affected by our culture. Somehow, we are affected by our culture. The characteristic of our culture today is that we are so preoccupied with getting on to the next thing. What did you have for lunch today? I don't remember because I'm so preoccupied with what I'm going to make for supper. I want to stay in the reality of right now. What is God doing? What is he saying? How is he communicating his love to me right now? What are some signs that I am not living in the present moment? and hence limiting the permission that I'm giving or have the capacity of giving to God. Well, I'm being pushed around interiorly. I find myself being irritable, 
restless, discontent. I want to be somewhere else. And so I engage in daydreaming, engage in fantasy life. I can finish praying the breviary or spiritual reading. And one moment later, I ask myself, what did I just read? I have no idea. No recollection of what I did because interiorly, I'm just all over the place. Or I check my phone or I go on social media more often than I connect with Jesus and take the time to be still and listen to his voice, preoccupied with the voices of the world. I want to give God permission to move and act in my life right now. What is the next right thing? What's the next loving thing? Or as someone has said to me one time, Alan, what color is the room? To stay in the room. And that is where I encounter God, and that is where I can give God permission. The fifth part, and I know we're way on into a whole new frontier here. <laughs> Five points. Wow. We've never been this far away from home before. Five, <laughs> the fifth of six points in giving God permission is that it's not about what I feel or what I see. When I'm giving God permission, I can be receptive to his love and that even if I don't feel his love, I can still, by his grace, know that he is loving me. We can be in relationship with other people, even though they may not be not expressing verbally or physically love to us, we can still understand and detect the love that they do have for us. It's the same with God or Heavenly Father. And it's not just about what I see happening. What the Father did with the offering that Jesus made of himself on the cross was on that Good Friday, before the resurrection, it was hidden. What happens through our decision to give God permission is often hidden, or to be blunt, none of our business, what God does with the sacrifice, with the offering we make of ourselves to him. But I do have faith that a good is coming about. A change is happening. Grace is being offered to the world, offering ourselves for the holy souls in purgatory, offering ourselves for the still suffering addict, offering ourselves for persons who are far from the Lord, whomever we are offering ourselves for, to have confidence that a good is coming about and change is indeed happening. I dare say we will see by, when God's, by God's grace we get to heaven, we'll see and meet individuals whom we have helped through our prayers and our sacrifices and our giving God permission to move and act in our life. And finally, we're almost home. <laughs> Finally, the sixth point, the sixth element of this receptivity to the Father's love is that I relate to him as I am. I come before the Lord, understanding, Mark chapter 1, verse 11, You are my beloved son, the Father said, with you I am well pleased. You are my beloved daughter. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. That is the word that we can reflect upon often. It's the word that is said to us at Mass. It's said to us in the scriptures. It's said to us in our personal prayer time. It is said to us, and it is a word that can bring about a transformation and a profound change in our life. That I, me personally, me, I am a beloved daughter. I am a beloved son of God the Father, he who created the universe out of nothing. I'm just a small little speck in the midst of this unlimited universe. 
yes, but I am a beloved speck in the midst of this immense, immeasurable universe. Those who relate intimately are real people. And I'm sure you can identify with the desire that I have in my life. I desire and want to relate to real people, to engage with real people at the level of the heart, not just the head, the level of the heart, the person. And when I relate to God, my Father, as a real person, He is alive. He is the one who has called me into existence, created me out of nothing, then I am receptive that much more to his love, his life, and his grace because I am relating to him honestly. He knows what's going on in our life. He knows the ups. He knows the downs. He knows the mediocre times of our life. But he loves us in the midst of all of that. There's nothing that you and I can do to make God love us more. Nothing that we can do to make him love us less because God, as St. John says, is love. He is love and he loves us immensely. And the most fruitful human activity that you and I can engage in is receptivity to the Father's love. The most fruitful human activity is receptivity to the Father's love. It all begins there. When I know and have experienced the love that God has for me, then I am that much more willing and able to give him permission. And when I give him permission, he is that much more willing and able to cooperate and work through me, through you, and bring about even a greater renewal in his church in the world today. What does it all mean? I don't know. God knows. Do I trust him? Step three of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous made a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood him. And whenever I read that step, the word that always stands out for me is care. Turn my will and my life over to the care of God. God cares for me. St. Ignatius of Loyola would say that at the beginning of each prayer period, we should take the time of the duration of one our Father and ask the Lord two questions. First, Lord, how do you see me today? Secondly, Lord, how are you loving me today? So we're gonna do that. Let's just take the time the duration of one our father ask those two questions and then we'll wrap up our time here together with a prayer So let us pray. So Lord, we, we thank you for the gift of this time. We thank you, Jesus, for the life and example of Father Bob Bedard. We thank you, Jesus, for inspiring in him a willingness to give you permission. And the way, Lord, that you worked through him to encourage all of us to give you permission. Lord, we come before you just as we are. We are poor, Lord. But we qualify, Lord. We qualify for your divine welfare. And so we want to be, Lord, in a place of receptivity. We want, Lord Jesus, to engage in rejection. Rejection of all the lies that the evil spirit in the world and our flesh whisper and yell into our minds. We just want to renounce Jesus. We renounce in your name, Lord Jesus, any way in which the evil spirit of rejection has entered into our life. 
And we command you, spirit of rejection, to leave us right now in the name of Jesus. Fill us up, Lord Jesus. Fill us up with the grace of the acceptance that comes from your love. Lord Jesus, we also, in your name, renounce the spirit of abandonment and any other associated evil spirits. And we command you, spirit of abandonment, to leave us right now. Fill us up, Jesus. Fill us up with a renewed confidence and conviction that we are indeed your beloved sons and daughters, and that you have made a promise never to abandon us. We also, Lord Jesus, in your name, renounce the spirit of shame and all associated evil spirits. We command you, spirit of shame and all other spirits, to leave us right now. You have no right, no place in our life. Fill us up, Lord Jesus. Fill us up again with the confidence in your mercy that we are valuable, Jesus, in your sight. And Lord, we also desire today to be fully open to the promptings, the movements of your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to become magnanimous, large-hearted, Lord, by your grace. Help us continue, Lord, to be women and men who are truly charitable, loving, open, welcoming, understanding, patient, and kind, Lord Jesus. May our words, our actions, Lord Jesus, be attractive to others, that they too, by the example of our life, would be willing to give you permission today, Jesus. In the present moment, Lord, it's now, Lord Jesus, that you are calling us to yourself. And so we take an opportunity right now, Lord Jesus, this time, this place, to give you once again, or for the first time, our yes. We say yes to you, Jesus, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the offer of your grace right at this very present moment. Help us, Lord, to have a solid confidence in what you are indeed doing, even though we may not see it, Lord, even though we may not feel it. But help us always remember, Lord, that you are always our Father always caring for us. Help us, Lord. Help us to continue to grow in honesty. We want to relate to you, Lord, just as we are. We don't want to hide anything from you, Jesus. You see it all anyway. And you say, I love you. That you love us, Lord Jesus, in spite of what we have done or will do. You died on the cross, Jesus, seeing all that we would do and you loved us and shed your blood to save us, Jesus. And so we want to be washed anew in the blood of your Holy Spirit grace, Lord, your power, your peace, your everything, Jesus. I give you permission, Lord. Do with us as you will. Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, and all of our patron saints, Please pray for us. Amen. Okay, well, there you go. God bless you. Let's just keep giving the Lord permission. And until we meet again, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father Allen, for that amazing talk. You know, Father Bob always said that we have to give God permission. And one thing that I really got from Father Allen's talk is that in order to give God permission to work in my life, I first have to be receptive of his love. And so I'm grateful to be able to pray with you today as we try to become more receptive to God's love so that we can give him permission to work in our lives. For me, when I try to be more receptive to God's love, some things that help me that I'd invite you to try right now is perhaps to close your eyes, to open your hands, and say inside your heart, come Holy Spirit. I'd like you to try to imagine 
the reality that God is with you right now. You could imagine Jesus placing his hand on your shoulder, the Father lifting you up in his arms, perhaps the Holy Spirit filling you with light and peace. Rest in that presence now. As you try to connect with the Father, the enemy can sometimes try to stir up lies inside of us saying that we're not worthy for Jesus to place his hand on our shoulder. We're not worthy for the Father to be with us because we do sin. We want to reject these lies, these blocks from the enemy. Father Allen talked about accepting our weakness. We can think about Peter and how he was weak and betrayed the Lord, and Jesus still loved him. We could meditate on the rich young man who went away sad because he wasn't willing to give up his wealth to follow Jesus. But in the scriptures, it says that Jesus looked on him and loved him. I invite you to reject any lies of the enemy that say you're not worthy. And remember that even in your difficulty, even in your weakness, Jesus is saying to you right now, I love you and I choose you. And we may be feeling a sense of God's love inside of us, but at the very least, we also need to make sure that we just acknowledge it as a truth in our minds. So with this truth of God's love that we can feel and that we can know in our minds and our hearts, in this place of receptivity of God's love, we can say, Jesus, I choose to give you permission. I trust you, I desire you, Do whatever you will for my life. Show me the next right thing that you want me to do. Ask him in your prayer right now. Show me, Jesus, the next right thing that you want me to do. I give you permission. Jesus, keep me in your love as we do it together. Jesus, I love you. Help me to extend the victory of your cross. God bless you and peace be with you. Wow, thank you, Father Allen. I really liked your third point, that I need God's love all the time, and that giving God permission means that I need to have my sails open to the wind of the Holy Spirit all the time. I want to give all of you an opportunity tonight to support Father Allen in his ministry, and indeed to support the Companions of the Cross in everything that they do. I invite you to make a donation to our Advent Appeal this year. You can do so by just clicking on the link you see on the screen. It'll take you right to our website and you can make a donation. Thank you very much for your generosity and may God bless you. The heresy of the modern age, the great modernist heresy that somehow somebody has sold us, is that God is asleep. He's not asleep. We have forced the Lord into a kind of unwilling retirement and he wants out. He languishes in retirement and he wants off the shelf. But being polite in the extreme, he does not force his way into our lives. 
He wants us to invite him. And when we do that, when we open up our lives and our hearts and tell the Lord, give the Lord permission, really, to do with us what he wants, then we see what he does. And I didn't begin to see a great deal that God was doing until I came to that point where I said, Lord, whatever you want to do with me, you just go ahead. I think before that I had assumed I knew what he wanted to do. Basically, I figured he wanted to rely on me a lot. He kind of had confided the church to me and to you. And it was up to us to make the best of it, to try to be wise, to try to be strong, to try to be, have perspective, to try to be smart. I figured that's the way it was. And I didn't begin to see him do a great deal until I surrendered all that and said, Lord, I'm not in charge of this thing. Like you're the boss. You take over. 